back, Legionnaires! Today, we're in episode 2 of the Introduction to Polymer series, and we're going to be discussing a very important commodity in our everyday lives. Plastics! Now, it's important to note that not all polymers are plastics, however, all plastics are polymers. And, in fact, most of the plastics that we encounter in our everyday lives can be identified by one of these seven symbols, also known as the Resin Identification Code. So, the resin identification code tells us essentially how easily can my plastic be recycled and what category of recyclables does it belong in. Number one, at the lower end of the spectrum, indicates that a material is more easily recycled and poses a lower threat to the environment, whereas number seven, on the higher end of the spectrum, indicates that a material requires a more strenuous processing for recycling and is also a higher threat to the environment. Now there's so much I could say about all seven of these diverse categories of plastics and how we use them in our daily lives. However, for this video, I'm only going to be focusing on number one, polyethylene, polyethylene terephthalate. terephthalate. That may sound like a mouthful, but trust me, this polymer is not that complicated. Not too long ago, I bought this bottle of juice, and lo and behold, if I look at the bottom of it within that triangle, I see the number one and I'm printed underneath it PET. -E. So this tells me that I have polyethylene terephthalate, one of the world's largest commodity polymers. Let's take a look at the structure. So polyethylene terephthalate is an ester, a polyester. And how do I know this? Well, because we have this ester linkage here. And in particular, this polyester is made up of ethylene and terephthalate. So we would expect that this polymer could possibly be what is called a step rope polymer. And this, this step rope polymer in particular is made from ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid. Now, if you don't know what a step rope polymer is, don't worry. More details on that will be coming soon in a later video. Now onto some common applications. So besides being used in water bottles and soda bottles, as I mentioned already, you can actually find polyethylene terephthalate in your frozen dinner trays. So while you're warming up your Totina's pizza rolls or whatever it is, you know that you can find those in your lasagna or whatever, yeah. And the reason why is because um, PET is an inert material, so yeah, it's not going to react with your food, you're not going to get plastic contamination. It can also withstand the high temperatures of the microwave, so that's why it's really good for like these frozen dinner trays. Also, 3D printing, injection molding. Why? Because it's a thermoplastic, and so you can heat it up past this, past this glass transition temperature, you can get a very liquefied substance that can be molded and processed easily. Hence those applications. Fibers. PET has good elasticity and mechanical strength, so it makes good fibers for carpet and upholstery as well. We would have liked most of the plastics we use in our daily lives is um, actually based on a non-renewable resource, um, hydrocarbons. Now that sounds like a bad thing, it almost sounds contradictory to what I told you before, that number one plastics are good for the environment. However, I can explain. So even though PET is based on hydrocarbon sources, um, that's how we're able to extract ethylene glycol and ter terephthalic acid. However, because this polymer can be recycled and repurposed so easily, 40% of that energy is retained whenever it goes through a repurposing step. So if we go from the water bottle to the frozen dinner tray to the 3D printing, note that we retain those properties. We retain that, that um, energy, 40% of it at least, as we repurpose the plastic. So that's why it's pretty cool. Um, so here we go. We distill the hydrocarbon into lighter fractions. Within those fractions, we're able to extract ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid, and we do the step rope polymerization I mentioned earlier. Bing! We get PET. So, I've been mentioning a lot of the pros of PETs, and I'm just going to go over them briefly, but this is not like unicorn land, this is not fairy tale world. It's not a perfect polymer, it does have some downsides. Yes, it's chemical resistance, which is why it's used in um, food and beveraging, uh, microwavable goods and items. It has a high strength to weight ratio, which means it's very lightweight. So, of course, if you have your plastic water bottle, you don't want it to be weighing like extremely 
high amounts of pounds and weighing down your backpack or weighing down your entire body when you're on a camping trip. So that's pretty good. It's scatterproof. Dirt is on the floor and it doesn't break. Transmissivity, that secondly means that I can see through it. So you want to see what's inside my water bottle. Do I have clean water? Do I have dirty water? Do I really have the, the soda they told me I was getting? You know, all that stuff. Now cons. PET is not biodegradable, okay? Now for some applications you may say, why the heck would I care if it's biodegradable? Um, but yeah, it can't be broken down in the environment. If I throw it on the ground, it's not going to decompose. So we're going to have to take energy in order to, to get this plastic to go from one form to the next or to recycle it. Okay, so there's one downside. It's also susceptible to oxidation, which is why we don't see PET being used in beer bottles and such, because for those kinds of beverages, we need to make sure that the taste is not going to change over time when oxygen gets incorporated in, and PET, unfortunately, does not give us that capability. Well guys, that's PET. I hope you enjoyed, and next time you're drinking soda or water, take a look at your bottle and, you know, make sure I didn't lie to you. Well, that's all I have for now. Bye.